Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson in Traction Corn Shell. Today, we are going to go over how you run processes in the background. Say you wanted to run a bunch of programs all at the same time. Say 10 or 15. Well, you could open up 10 or 15 SSH sessions, or Telnet sessions, and run them all at once, going to the right directory before you kick them off. That's probably going to be a little bit of a hassle logging into those boxes. And if you want to do this, say, once every Saturday, it's going to get to be a pain in the neck. Now, as you know, you can put 10 or 15 commands into a corn shell script. However, if you have them all in one corn shell script, what's going to happen is the first program starts and when that ends, the second program runs. And when that ends, the third program runs, so forth and so on. So we're going to figure out a way to kick off all 15 of those programs all at once in the same program, in the same corn shell script. So back in the old days, you had a limited number of connections to your big old computers. And so you had to make the most use of them. And if you had a program that would say run three days because back then computers weren't very powerful and things that might take 10 minutes to run now might have taken three days in the past. If you had something that took three days to run, you'd basically be tying up a terminal for three whole days, which would not be very good for you and not be very good for anybody else wanting to use the terminal. So Corn Shell created a way or implemented a way that you can run programs in the background. And I honestly don't know if they inherited this from the Born Shell or if it was something that came with the Born Shell and Corn Shell just adopted. However, this right here is how you run a program in the background. And you'll notice this is commented out. Take an application and just put an ampersand after it. And what this tells Corn Shell is take this application and run it in the background. So let's look at these commands right here. Sleep4. Sleep is a Unix command. It says put your terminal to rest for four seconds. After we complete this command, we're going to run this command, which says print after sleep 4. Next, when this command finishes, we're going to say sleep 3. We're going to sleep for 3 more seconds. And after, we're going to say after sleep 3. We're going to print it out. And after that, we're going to sleep for 5 seconds. Once we're done sleeping for 5 seconds, we come back and say after sleep 5. Let's run this program and see what happens. Program name is called bg.ksh, bg standing for background. And we're doing nothing. And now it says that we just finished up the sleep. Now it says we finished up the next sleep. And now it says we finished up the last sleep. So as you can see, each of these statements ran, and then afterward, Corn Shell went to the next line of the program, which is the way it normally should run. Unless, of course, you have an if statement or a loop. Normally, Corn Shell starts at the top, tries to make it way, its way down to the bottom, unless, of course, it hits an if statement or a while statement, which will cause it to skip over certain steps or repeat certain steps. But at all times during that corn shell script, you're always only running one pro, one command at a time. Now let's look at bg2.ksh. This will actually run programs in the background. And all these comments are the exact same as what we had in our first program. 
and once again to run a program in the background you give the program name and then put an ampersand at the end. So corn shell goes through all the comments, doesn't do anything with them. Sees a sleep for, and it's a Unix command, so we'll sleep four seconds, but we have an ampersand at the end. So that says to corn shell, take this, start running it, and then immediately go to the next command, which is print after sleep four. When this command finishes, as you notice, we don't have an ampersand at the end of this because the print statement should be very fast. We're going to sleep for three more seconds, but we're running it in the background. So corn shell sees this whole statement, starts running this in the background, and immediately goes to this command, which is the next print statement. Prints out sleep after three, which should be an instantaneous command. And it might help if I could spell sleep. Lastly, we're going to sleep for five seconds. However, once again, we're running it in the background. So corn shell starts running this program and immediately goes to the next line. So let's take a look at how this runs. Here's our program. And as you can see, all three of the print statements came right after one another. There was no pause in between. Foreign shell did, in fact, start the first sleep statement, go right to the print statement, start the second sleep statement, go right here, and start the third sleep statement and go right here.